Hey, what's up Blender users, I'm Jonathan, and today, after I have covered Blender, Houdini and Embergen as smoke solvers in the past, I want to show you another entry in the list. We are going to have a look at Storm, which is a multi-purpose simulation tool that can simulate granular liquid and smoke simulations. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a simple explosion and how you can import it into Blender. Oh and by the way, if you enjoy my content, consider subscribing because I upload a new video every Saturday. Also, I got a lot of people asking me to update this Mantaflow video because it doesn't work anymore in the newest Blender version. I'm working on it, but it seems like this Blender version is just a little bit buggy and so creating the updated video might take a while. And with all that said, let's get started. Storm can be downloaded from this website. You can see that as a student you get it for relatively cheap or you can download the demo version. For this you have to scroll down a little bit and with this button right here it can be downloaded. The demo version doesn't support exporting though. Once downloaded, Storm doesn't need to be installed. You just have to unzip it and you'll get these directories right here. The exe file is located in the bin folder and the other folder we have to watch out for is the geo folder. These are default meshes that we can later use in Storm. So let's start up Storm and create our explosion. Today I will only focus on creating a smoke and fire simulation. This video will not cover liquid and granular ones. I want to quickly show you the interface. It is pretty straightforward. We have our viewport right here that can be navigated with Alt, Left, Right and Middle Mouse button. You have your object panel right here. You can add different objects with these buttons right here or over the Add Object menu entry. And you have your parameters right here and your Procedurals tab right here. The Procedurals tab is new and allows us to use nodes to create simulations. And this is what we'll do today. So let's press Tab and type in Read. You can see that a Read node can read a geometry and display it in Storm. And you can see that we are using the box.obj file in the geometry folder. But for this explosion I want to start with a sphere. So let's type in Sphere and you can see that Storm found this model and it is now visible in the viewport. This sphere will be our emitter and I first want to emit particles that then guide our smoke and fire simulation. So let's first place the sphere correctly. Let's hit T for a transform node and put in 0.5 for the uniform scale. And then with W we can move the sphere upwards. Just like this. To make our sphere emit particles we have to scatter particles around it. And for this conveniently we have a scatter node. So let's type in scatter and choose scatter. But you can see we do not see anything. And this is because the scatter node doesn't work with geometry inputs. But we have to first convert our sphere into a volume. To make our sphere visible again, we can enable this visibility checkbox right here. By shaking a node, we can disconnect it. And let's also make it not visible. Let's select our transform node and type in MTV, which corresponds to mesh to volume. This allows us to convert our mesh to a VDB object. Great, let's now plug this node into the scatter node and make the scatter visible. And you can now see that we get points scattered across our sphere. These points are relatively big and hard to recognize, but when clicking on the read node you can see that the visualization of the points changed. So this hard to recognize visualization is just because we have the scatter node selected. Let's now make our emitter a little bit more random. So let's add in a noise node. And you can already see it take an effect. We can, for example, change the noise amp to make it a little bit more extreme. Now we have to make our particles animate. If I press spacebar, you can see that the playhead is moving, but it doesn't change anything. So let's press on reset and let's add in an origin node. An origin node is always required for simulations because, well, they need an origin. And next, we need an emit node. So let's plug all of these together and if I now play you can see that it is emitting particles. But it just goes on forever and we do not have any forces and no gravity. So let's start by adding gravity. You can just type in gravity and a gravity node will be connected. If I play now you can see that the particles are falling downwards. Great, let's reset it and make it so the particles are only emitted on the first frame. For this, we can select the emit node and double click the text box next to enabled. And let's type in frame smaller than 2. 
This means that particles are only emitted on the first frame. Basically, we can type in math functions in these text boxes right here. And when they are true, well, the value is true. And just like this, particles are emitted on the first frame. Now let's make this a little bit more random and add in a force node. We can then choose a noise strength of maybe two and also play with the other parameters. These are all pretty self-explanatory, so I will not go over them in detail. Let's press play and you can see that our simulation is a lot more random. But of course we need a ground where the particles would disappear. And for this we can use the point delete node. This allows us to easily delete points. And we can again use a function. And for this, let's type in add p.y because this program is y up and then smaller than zero. This means that all particles will be deleted below zero on the y-axis. So once we play it, you can see that everything works as expected. Great. Now we have our particle simulation ready and we can start creating our smoke and fire explosion. For smoke and fire, we have separate nodes. So let's choose a smoke origin as well as a smoke emitter and a smoke solver. We can now use these points as an input, but if we just connect them up, you can see that nothing happens. We have to first convert our points to a VDB object because the smoke emit node only uses VDBs as an input. So let's visualize our points again and let's type in PTV, which corresponds to particle to volume. And with this selected, we can see that it works fine. We can now use this as an input for our smoke emit node and visualize our smoke solver. Once we hit spacebar, you can see that smoke is starting to appear. In this program, volumes are visualized with these little cubes. The smoke will of course be smooth once it is exported. Now, I want to add some heat in our simulation. So with the smoke emit selected, let's use a heat emission value of two, reset it, and we can see that fire is starting to appear. This fire will be automatically exported as an attribute to Blender. Again, all of these values are pretty self-explanatory and you can just play around with them. If you want to simulate fuel, you have to go to the smoke origin, right click on the sim fuel text box and change it to true. But I only need heat, so I will leave it at the default values. If you want your simulation to have a higher resolution, you can change the voxel size. For example, we can make it a lower resolution with 0.1 and you can already see it taking effect or again make it a higher resolution simulation with 0.05. But be aware that this value will change your simulation. If you want to break up your simulation a little bit, you can also add a force node in the end right here and adjust the noise strength to maybe 4. And you can see that our simulation is now a lot more noisy. Okay, I mean that's great and all, but we want to render the simulation in Blender. So to do this, let's first save our project and after that, select the last node, press tab and add in a right node. If we click on the file path right here, you can see that we are using this expression. And for this to work correctly, we just have to delete .abc and type in .vdb as a file extension. And now if we press on sim, the explosion will be exported. For the sake of this video, I will stop the simulation process right here. So let's click on pause and reset because we do not need the simulation. Before I switch over to Blender and show you how to import the exported sequence, I quickly want to show you how we can animate values in Storm. This is done pretty easily. If we, for example, want to animate the size of our sphere, we can, on a certain frame, just Alt-click on the scale parameter, go to a different frame, change the value and Alt-click again. And now you can see that in the timeline keyframes have been created and the sphere is animating. If you want to delete keyframes, we can control click on the value or click once on uniform scale and delete the expression. Great, and with all that said, let's switch over to Blender and import our simulation. Over in Blender, let's start by deleting everything and with Shift and A, choose Volume Import Open VDB. Navigate to the folder where you have exported your simulation and choose Import Open VDB. This will automatically import as a sequence, but you can see that it is rotated incorrectly. So we just have to rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis. To finalize this video, I want to quickly shade the simulation. 
So let's switch over to cycles and in the render tab, let's disable scene world just so we have some light in our scene. In the shader editor, click on new material with the explosion selected and we can just ramp up the black body intensity. But you can see that this doesn't really work. We are using the correct attribute, but there are better ways to shade this simulation. Let's add in an attribute node and copy temperature to the name field right here. We can now connect the factor to the emission strength input and use a black body node for the color. To make our simulation a bit smoother, we can go into the material settings and choose cubic. This will render a bit slower, but it looks a lot better in the end. To reduce the amount of fire, we can use a math node, choose greater than and play around with the threshold. After that, we can use a multiply node and multiply it by an amount we like. Also, the density is way too low. Let's maybe choose a density of 25 and I think that looks good. And yeah, that's basically it. This is how we can use Storm to easily create smoke simulations, which we can then import into Blender. If you enjoyed this video and if you learned something, consider liking and subscribing. And we will see each other in the next video next Saturday.